Hello and welcome everybody. On the 3rd of February 2017, exactly six years by the time this video uploads, Ghost Recon Wildlands was released. And I think it's really sad to say that it is still the benchmark game, in my opinion, for the open world shooter genre. Not that it is a perfect game, but we are still waiting for a production after six years that can clearly outperform this title. In this video I want to show you a few examples why Ghost Recon Wildlands is so beloved and still relevant and where other titles fall short. Of course, this is a somewhat subjective topic, but you might find some valuable insights and even inspiration to try out other games that I will mention here. In the last part of the video I will sum up some alternative games in comparison to Wildlands for you. Open world PvE shooters may be my most favorite overall genre to play. I sunk immense hours into the Division games, the Far Cry series, Borderlands and so on. I think I invested a substantial amount of time into every AAA production in the last years. And also into titles like Anthem, Metal Gear Solid 5 and semi-open world shooters like Remnant, the Metro series and non-AAA titles like Generation Zero. I came to Ghost Recon Wildlands and also Breakpoint relatively late after their releases because I initially thought they would be heavily focused on the co-op gameplay and not so suitable for solo players like me, but I was completely wrong about that. Let's set the stage here what Ghost Recon Wildlands offers and where it excels and also where it falls short. I will focus on three major aspects. The gameplay and what kind of shooter it is, the open world aspect and the progression systems and long-term motivation to play. And in these categories I will compare to other games I played and mentioned before. In opposite to more arcadey games like Borderlands, Wildlands centers around a more tactical, thoughtful and slower paced combat. In an open firefight you will not last long, especially on the higher difficulties. You could say it is a much more realistic approach on how encounters would play out. Reconnaissance is very important, stealth plays a big role, you do have a cover system and you can take down enemies silently from behind. So a lot of options here for how you want to play it, where an all-out firefight in the open is always a worst case scenario. And you do have a bunch of tactical tools, like the extremely powerful sync shot, where you can order teammates to kill enemies, additional rebel forces or mortar strikes. And here we have the first reason why Wildlands outperforms other titles, the sheer variety of how you can play in the sandbox. In the Division games for example you have no stealth or takedowns. Other titles are focusing on a more balls to the walls gameplay like Borderlands and the closest you can get in terms of gameplay options is maybe the Far Cry series where you can play stealthy and tactical but big shootouts are also a very viable option. Another central gameplay aspect is the focus on more pure shooter mechanics in this game. The gear is purely cosmetic, weapon damage is not that important because headshots are always deadly and you don't fight against enemy health bars while unloading magazine after magazine like for example in The Division. So we have a more pure shooter approach versus a more RPG style approach where your bullets are always deadly and so are the enemies. You are simply not able to tank a boatload of shots. This makes for an overall coherent shooter experience that clearly chooses one style of shooter and sticks to it and make all the gameplay systems work towards this goal. Instead of trying to cater to different playstyles, creating a jack of all trades problem where you can do everything on an okay level instead of excelling in a more focused experience. That was one of the downfalls of the initial breakpoint release, the successor of Wildlands. And the funny thing here is, one of the weaker aspects of Wildlands is the gunplay itself, that feels vastly improved in Breakpoint. Not that the gunplay is bad in Wildlands, but you should stay away from long range sniper rifles and leave that part to the sync shots because the bullet drop off is kinda ridiculous. Calling Wildlands a benchmark for the shooter genre while the gunplay is on the weaker side says something about the rest of this game. Let's move into the next part, the open world aspect. And I cannot stress enough how important this part is. 
we are talking open world shooters here. So the open world, your playground and sandbox is of course the centerpiece of these kinds of games. If the world does not work or click with you, then you will not have a lot of fun, despite the most awesome gunplay. And I don't even talk about story here, I mean the open world as a whole experience. I can forgive a cringy or subpar story, as long as the world I'm experiencing is something I like and feel immersed in. The Division 1 for example is extremely beloved up to this day for its atmosphere and world it created, despite having inferior gameplay mechanics to its successor. And what an outstanding job Wildlands did here. Bolivia is one hell of an open world and I dare to say it is the best one in the genre up to this day. And besides simply looking great even by today's standards, it nails core elements. Asset variety and usage of assets for example. With a world so huge you will run into reused assets and the bigger the world gets the more present this problem will be. That holds back for example smaller titles like Generation Zero. While creating a fantastic world and atmosphere, the repetitiveness of assets will show more and more the longer you play the game. Now of course you will see the same assets like some buildings, lookout towers and so on in Wildlands. But the effort and creativeness the team put into developing unique locations and experiences for you is simply awesome. Two examples here. You see a boot camp for soldiers here and although just being a minor location of no bigger relevance, it is created with a lot of attention to detail rather than just placing some assets. Or this prison tucked into a little canyon. You might recognize a lot of the assets, but they have been able to create these unique and cool places that vary immensely and thus preventing the game from feeling bland and boring. This is in my opinion the biggest fault of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. No matter how much they patched it into a much more Wildlands like experience these days, the flat and bland assets of the tech themed world are getting really annoying every time I play that game. I will show you some side to side footage here so you can judge for yourself. Despite improvements in graphic fidelity, for me Wildlands looks and feels so much better than Breakpoint. Another aspect is the effort Wildlands put into populating the world and giving these people a kind of schedule and realistic behavior. For example, at night you will find soldiers asleep or in their social areas and much more activity during daytime. This is another huge factor to create an immersive open world that, and I said it before, is the centerpiece of an open world game. And another area where the successor showed how much less effort was put into those systems. Two other features where Wildlands is going the extra mile to create a more immersive experience are mission design and non-randomized additional voice lines. Clearing a region in the Ghost Recon games follows a basic formula. Collecting intel and executing related missions until the final mission is unlocked. To prevent this from becoming too repetitive, Wildlands provides a decent balance between base clearing, stealth and unique missions. Like stealing a truck and replacing it with an identical looking one. This variety is very important as you progress through the main story and explore Bolivia. Also, I was often surprised when at certain points in missions specific voice lines from the team were triggered. Sometimes just cracking jokes or commenting on the situation at hand or telling crude stories. Things like this show the attention to detail and effort the development team put into creating an engaging open world experience. And Wildlands manages to combine the immense scale of the game with this feeling of a varied and vibrant open world. Games with a smaller scale like The Division excel in their atmosphere and are superior in their overall visual experience, but then they don't have to fill so much space like Wildlands did with Bolivia. And you can even see Wildlands age when they try to create more modern and sleek looking locations like this villa complex. It starts to look a lot more bland and uninteresting, 
Gladly, there are only a few of such locations, where Breakpoint's world is centered around this tacky and flat looking buildings. And Breakpoint sometimes really shines in the few locations that look much closer to the Wildlands overall world theme. So my point stands, no other game with a similar scale has provided us with such a great open world in terms of variety, unique places and atmosphere and populated it with realistic feeling NPCs that have their own schedule and thus providing a huge share why this game feels so well rounded and immersive. The final point being progression systems and long term incentives to play the game. Wildlands has the main campaign mode and for PvE players also the ghost experience with permadeath and the ability to turn off your NPC teammates. I don't think the other modes are worth your time. Despite having no loot progression aside from a huge amount of different guns and parts for these guns, Wildlands always manages to give me a carrot on the stick to keep me engaged. A full playthrough is very long, but it takes a lot of time to progress through all skills collect all guns and after reaching maximum level the tier system offers another long term progression system. It creates the overall feeling of a slight but steady progression that is always present. Much in opposite to something like the Far Cry series where you usually only progress through the story towards the end and progression in other areas falls flat. While the progression systems of Wildlands might not be perfect and certainly have some room for improvement, they simply work for the scale of this game and keep you engaged throughout a playthrough. And all this without RPG style loot, gear score or other common progression systems. In my final section I want to mention other open world shooter games and compare them briefly to the Wildlands experience, so you might find some interesting titles to try out. Starting with its successor, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. While improving substantially on gunplay and after all the patches giving you great options to customize your game in terms of difficulty and experience, by the way I made a whole video about how important those features are, go and check it out, the world created falls flat in comparison. The assets are bland, it feels dead and empty for the most part and NPC behavior is a huge step back compared to Wildlands. But it gives you more of a very similar gameplay experience that you can enjoy if you are able to live with the rather uninspired open world itself. The Far Cry series offers the closest in terms of gameplay variety. You have stealth, takedowns, you can play as a sniper or as an all out balls to the walls arcade like shooter. This creating the jack of all trade problem but overall it has a quite satisfying moment to moment gameplay. Story wise you either click with it or not. I personally found Far Cry 6 to be a big letdown, badly paced and dragged out and while I really like the scenery and story of Far Cry 5. The way the story was forced on you at certain points was really bad. Also gun variety and customization in Far Cry 5 is very basic, although I think it is the better game compared to Far Cry 4 or Far Cry 6. The Division series offers you a different beast gameplay wise. I really like the settings and the overall theme, but you have a cover based RPG shooter with bullet sponges and not really a shooter like experience. If you are okay with that, then these games provide great value, but no stealth or takedowns are possible here. Metal Gear Solid 5 with its open world might be the title you look for if you want a similar, maybe even more realistic approach. But be warned, the story is really bonkers and the game can be infuriating in terms of accessibility. If you can work past the clunky menus, a lot of unexplained systems and some general what the heck is going on moments, then you might find a real gameplay pearl here. Moment to moment gameplay is really great if you can cope with a lot of clunky stuff attached to it. Generation Zero is a real hidden gem, but also not a AAA production, which shows in enemy variety and assets. But like Wildlands, it creates a very cohesive and enjoyable experience, because it knows exactly what it wants and focuses on that. You can find a detailed video about this game on my channel. The Borderlands games go full arcade into a very different direction, but can be very satisfying games if you enjoy that kind of arcadey RPG-like gun 
gunplay. Nothing to find here for the tactical, stealthy player, where a headshot is always deadly. If you go a step away from true open world games and are also into semi-open world shooters, then get the original Metro games before Exodus and also buy Remnant from the Ashes. Seriously, that game is awesome and where Wildlands is my true open world gem, Remnant is my all-time favorite semi-open world shooter. Again, you can find a dedicated video about this game on my channel, even more than one. So this has become quite a lengthy video. If you are still here, I hope you found this interesting and insightful. Maybe even a few cool games to check out. As always, subscribing, liking and commenting would immensely help this channel to grow. What other PvE shooter games do you recommend? And are you excited for Returnal coming to PC this month or Remnant 2? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, take good care of yourself and I hope you enjoy your gaming sessions.